So now that we understand how to compose conditions, and uh, we've briefly mentioned about directing ourselves into different code blocks, let's look at doing that. So let's actually use some variables. So let's say A equals three um, and B equals five. And let's create an if then else type of block. So we can do a check here. We can say if A equals two, then console.log, yes, A is two, right? And if we run this, right? So we're checking if A is two, we know A is not two. So we check if A is two, and if it is uh, two, then we would say that. So we can see here, it doesn't do anything because uh, A is not equal to two. So there's there's no reason to go in here. So when we use these curly braces, that denotes uh, a code block. And so this block of code will only run if the condition is met. So if we change this condition to a three here, then now uh, it's met, but actually the message is wrong. So this is a three, right? So uh, yes, A is a three. Now, what if we want to handle the case where A is not equal to three? then we can uh, continue with this. Um, so this if statement or yeah, this uh, if keyword or this if operator uh, does allow for us to uh, consider the case where it's not met. So in that case, we just include an else. So we say else and we can include here, um, this is a different code block now and we would say no A is not three. <clears throat> so A is three. So we know that uh, that block currently runs. It's uh, it's going into this upper block here. And you can see that the lower block did not run. We didn't see a message here saying, no, A is not three. So let's change the value to a two again. And if we run this, we can see this block didn't run, uh, but the block down here did run. So no, A is not three, right? A is a two here. And of course we can include this. Remember, uh, we can use the, uh, the string templates uh, so we can kind of tunnel out of our string and print out values of variables and so on using the dollar uh, curly braces uh, syntax. And so now if we run this, uh, whatever value we put in for A here, um, it will show us what the actual value of A is. So, um, so that's if else. Now, what if we wanted to test more values? Um, what if we also wanted to test for the possibility of A being four? And we can easily imagine a, a situation in our code where uh, if A was a specific value, then we wanted to do a certain thing. If A was a specific other value, um, then we wanted to do something else. And then if uh, A was neither one of those, then we wanted to do yet a third thing. So to handle that kind of case, um, we can do an else if. So we can include here, so we can include here an else if, and we can test here else if A equals four. Right, so we have, if A equals three, do this. Else if A equals four, do something else. And uh, if neither of those is met, then still go back to that. So we can say here, console.log, uh, yes, A is four. <clears throat> so if we run this again, A is still 25. So it's still, it checks this condition. It's not met. So it ignores this code block. It checks this condition. It's not four. So it ignores that code block. And then the last remaining one, the catch all situation, uh, it runs that. So let's change this to a four. And we can see it, it has entered this code block and then it doesn't go into else because it's not an else. The condition has been met. So it uh, executes that and exits from there. 
So that's else, else if, and else. Um, so that's tremendously powerful. And in fact, all the iterators that we look at uh, coming up uh, are derived in some way from uh, this kind of pattern. 